Good day, friends. This is E, the Empty Nester. Um, I'm going to harvest some of the true potato seeds um, that I've planted back. I started them like March 8th, 10th, and 15th and side. And I've got a video, you know, I'll put a link up there to, you know, some of the earlier videos. And um, I think in May, you know, I'm not for sure when it was I brought them outside and put them in the ground, but I found that the um, homemade grow bags that I made did the best with the um, seed starting, where the cups, um, little cups, were um, very limited growth for the seeds. And after putting them out here in the ground, they grew really well. I was surprised at how fast they took off and flowered and um, did well, but um, with true potato, <coughs> excuse me, with true potato seeds, there's a chance that you're only growing little tiny potatoes to make into seed for the following year, and there's a chance that you're growing big potatoes. Everything is um, unpredictable, and soil is really um, important. There's a potato beetle, or the shell of a potato beetle from this year, the striped one. I also found, <clears throat> this is the larva of a tomato hornworm. Let me open it up and show you. This is what will develop into the tomato hornworm. And yes, he's alive. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a caterpillar or a butterfly. They, um, you know, this is the larva stage, you know, where he goes into a shell and he'll come out as a moth type of butterfly and then start the cycle all over again, you know, into a caterpillar-like creature. And I'm going to put him in the shade here. And let me show you. This is one plant. Pull it up. This one here, I think, is blue dowel also, but let's see if I can get this off without a loss of potato. But the structure of the stem here, you can see the roots growing on it, and then the potatoes fell off where I was hoping to keep them attached. Here's some see how they're growing down the Stalin. Here's another one. Another one. What's sad is all the rain that we had this year, um, what do you call it, did some damage to everything as far as compacting the soil and um, all the worms seem to have disappeared too. It's like all the flooding we had, the worms would come up and the birds would eat them and you know right now unless the worms are really deep in the ground. You know, there's very few of them in here. And another thing, too, with the harvest, if it weren't for the weather change, you know, went from too much rain to not enough rain and extremely high temperatures, um, the tops of these plants may have stayed growing. See how this one is still growing? Um, with these being long season potatoes or mid season potatoes, right now in the fall when it cooled down, these tubers would have started bulking up instead of just staying miniature little tubers. But um, see how this plant is completely dead and this one's green um, that's growing off the side here. If I would have left it in the ground, there's a good chance these guys could have gotten bigger. But I'm going to go ahead and just pull them off. If 
for a typical harvest to, um, you know, eat the potatoes. You know, a lot of people would think that this is a bad harvest. But to me, it's a good harvest because, um, you know, any one teeny tiny little seed, like a tomato seed, created all these little potatoes. And these little potatoes next fall, or next spring, can go in the ground and be replanted and grow into hopefully bigger potatoes. But what I'm finding with the other exotic potatoes over here is um, they're kind of like a fingerling size, you know, a really small potato. Pull that one out. That one was really stuck in there, and the potatoes are stuck in there. Need the fork for that one. Also, with all the rain we had this year, I wasn't able to get that many berries. I only um, was able to pollinate um, three berries. Oh, look at the size of this one. That's not bad at all. I need to add some sand and um, maybe vermiculite or um, composted manure and get this ground softened back up and really fertile again. I can't dig too far back towards the fence because I still have the beans growing on the fence line. I don't want to disrupt their um, growing. So after the beans are all harvested, you know, I'll dig closer to the fence and see what's back in there. Because right now I can see, you know, here's a small tuber. And then grub worms, you know, we don't need these guys in the yard. That'll be disposed of. This one right here, see the growth starting here? This was going to start regrowing. That's really interesting. But it seems like the roots on these don't go deep unless. You know, they're in very, very um, loose soil. They pretty much stay at the top. Here's another one. That's really a cool potato. Look at the size shape of this one. And you can see the white mycorrhizo fungi on it. So the soil was really good, and that's in the area it was in. And this one, it looks like the potato tuber itself is already re-sprouting. It didn't have a long dormancy and it's possible if I go ahead and plant this one I can create more potatoes. And 
And that's a really pretty one. Look at this one. There's kind of red and gold. Whoops, I dropped the seed off of it. Here's the shell of a locust, you know, a cicada. He, you know, popped out of his little shell and off running around making all kinds of noise this summer. This one's starting to regrow also. Oops, there's a good size one. Man, look at the size of that one. It's a really good size one. Kind of a red purple in color. Micro. I put the shelf cloth liner on the pan so that you know I can um, keep the teeny tiny ones from falling through. I'll move you over here if this is any better view. Do you see the size of this one? It's a good one bite size. It's more of the multicolor. I had the spud edged with um, tiles, and let me go ahead and dig that up. It's a mulberry tree that planted itself from seed. I completely missed the roots, but I found potatoes. More potatoes. More potatoes. More potatoes. Really dark purple red color. Let's see what else we can dig up here. Yeah, I just found a worm. Look at that. Finally, I need to get him in the ground and get him multiplying. Here's some more potatoes. Some more. Look at that.
nice one. Look at the dark color of purple in that. And right next to it, a white one. I think the, it's like yellow. It's probably Skagit Gold Valley. Aww. Look at those purple ones for my heart. It's a heart shaped. I love finding heart potatoes. You know, these guys are good for your heart. You know, clue number one. <laughs> you know, and then some little purple fronds to go with you. The hardest part about um, a harvest like this, you it's hard to figure out what you're going to eat and what you're going to keep, you know, to turn into a seed harvest. But um, I've in order to evaluate, you know, what I'm going to regrow next year, you know, um, I can't grow a lot just for the sake of um, growing, but I, do you want to experiment with, you know, breeding different um, potatoes and creating maybe a new one that's going to, you know, live well and produce well in my area. So. You know, I'm going to be judging things, you know, for that also. Because in real life, if this was a real situation of, you know, needing these potatoes for food, you know, I would go hungry probably, you know, after the amount of space I gave them and the time I gave them. But knowing that um, the storage amount, the seed, you know, if you can get them to produce berries, you know, you've got a lifetime of food from, you know, regrowing, you know, growing the seeds into tubers and then growing these into food. But um, it all is a matter of patience, you know, waiting and seeing, you know, what develops. This one has got a spot on it. When I have more time, I'll go through the dirt and, you know, see what else I missed, you know, because I'm not going really deep. As hard as the soil is right now, um, I don't know that these potatoes were able to go deep. You know, I'm really disappointed in soil compaction. There's three right here. The red cloth is from an experiment I did a few years ago with, um, I took silver foil-like um, stuff that was reflective, and then the red um, cloth and um, black plastic, or black, something black. I'd have to look up in my records what it was, but... ...to see which one was better for the tomatoes and the um, broccoli and the red was the best for the broccoli. Wow, these are really cool. Look at the size and the shape. I like those guys. What I miss is put my hands in the dirt, but you, you can't trust the dirt um, completely till you know for a fact there's no glass and, and um, other debris. A lot of the topsoil that I brought in um, had all kinds of debris in it, and I'm really disappointed in all the topsoil and potting soil that was sold this year.
you couldn't trust it. It was kind of like the, you know, that you were paying to take someone's trash. Yeah, and look at that root. I hope it's not a bean root that I just tore out. But. There's another little worm. Exciting news. Get him planted. There's more. Probably Skagit Gold Valley. Okay, here's a closer look at the little bit that I harvested today. I've still got plenty more to dig up. But this will show you, you know, the purple, you know, the little heart guy. Really red, oblong tubers, long, and round, and then multicolored, teeny tiny ones. With these being open pollinated, um, you know, who knows if they are, you know, exactly what they started out to be. But, um, you know, I don't have the names for all of them on here, but more than likely, you know, this one or this one is Skagit Gold Dolly. And then Blue Doll is um, the purple one. And then there's still a couple others that may have been purple. I have to go look at the list of what I planted. But, um, here's a closer look at the mycorrhizal fungi. You know, the things that grow extra roots for your plants and connect you up to the growing network in the soil. You know, when you have soil, this is what you have. When you have dirt, you have this. Nothing added to it, just straight up barren roots.